Thomas Fessler filling in for a vacationing John Hudson, who decided that he would rather spend his birthday hanging out with his daughter and friends rather than talking UFOs with us. And we said, you know what? That's no problem whatsoever. Thomas Fessler, we bring you in. Thank you so much for joining us. How you doing, bud? Doing awesome, Dave. It's been a great week, you know. You know, some days you have uh, weeks at work when you feel like it's a week of Mondays, but at least my Monday only showed up on Monday and Friday, so it's not so bad. Uh, you know, it, we all live to work. No, we don't live to work. We worked. We we, we don't li we don't work to live. And you know, when the day ends and you have an opportunity to talk about UFOs and do some research into it and see where it's going, that's what I live for. Now, on your YouTube channel, Disclosure Tonight with Thomas Fessler. And I highly uh, ask all of our listeners to subscribe to your channel. You've been uh, really taking on this whole military industrial complex lately that we've been seeing in the news. Yeah. I'm really surprised that the mainstream media, Thomas, hasn't picked this up as of yet. They're starting to. We've seen articles from The Hill, Politico, even TMZ starting to pick this up. Yeah. But where's CNN? Where's Fox? Where's the New York Times? Where's the LA Times? Where are the big papers when this is a major story, my friend? Well, everyone's been quiet since December 26. It's like we it was there was this big rush up of all this information coming up to disclosure, right? And then all of a sudden, after disclosure hit, it's like although they've had the highest ratings they've ever had, all of a sudden they clamped down. You know, someone from Congress spoke up here, but then when we had uh um, you know, the, the, uh, Tim Burchett from the house. And then we had Bo, um, uh, representative, uh, Gillibrand from the Senate, actually Senator Gillibrand talk about this. There's still, there was nothing really that much on Tucker. There was nothing really on the major news. No one's covering the story, you know, and as we're getting closer to the approval of the, uh, NDAA, the national defense authorization act for, uh, fiscal year, 2022, it's been silent. It's been quiet. And not until after we had uh, the Pentagon come out and basically say, uh, we're not, you know, it was a uh, Doug, uh, uh, what do you call it? Speaker Kirby from the uh, Pentagon was out there, or John Kirby, I believe, going out there and saying that, hey, you know, uh, we're going to keep the information. We're going to keep it flowing, but we're not going to give you re regular updates and we're not going to read you into it. But still. A lot of the new, uh, any of the news that did cover it, they try to put a positive spin on it, which it's like sheep leading the sheep. Yeah, and and that's what I noticed. But I mean, we've been saying it for about a week and a half now. When it when the O A O I M S G first came yeah. out, okay, that basically people, this is the military industrial complex biting back at elected officials. Yeah, biting back, and yet. Silence. Silence. It's only a certain few in this community that have been really picking it up. And there's some great writers and journalists out there for Politico, The Hill, who have grabbed it as well. And even TMZ, which is more of a smut type channel. Okay. I mean, they're even noticing how it's that obvious. Uh, they're the only ones who are willing to track down the house representative on the Hill when he's walking down the stairs. He does that every single day, if not a couple times a day. And no one is out there. That's the, that the, the part that, you know, blows my mind is we have these people who are willing to talk, willing to give comment on it. But it was like the comment they had on TMZ was great. Not only did he mention the uh, industrial, com the military industrial complex, he uh, uh, called out the religious industrial complex that basically saying you've got these people who are in these corporations that are not just out that are outside of the Pentagon who are using religious intent and such for controlling the narrative because they're afraid of what the truth can bring. All right. But two of the people who have been attacked recently are Chris Mellon and Luis Elizondo basically being told to shut up by yeah. this, uh, by this military industrialized group. 
they both spoke out though. Like you brought up the Hill. The Hill had a piece that ran two days ago where you had both Elizondo and Mellon speaking out, talking about, well, not necessarily naming them in a military industrial complex, but this need for to keep disclosure, uh, to keep the information clamped down, what they've do, been doing for the last 75 years, and they want to continue it for another 75 years. Okay, so what what is the purpose of the military, in your opinion, trying to cover this up? Well, think about all the stuff they've potentially done. You know, we've had it go all the way back to Roswell 70 plus years ago. How many people have they told that you're that you're lying, that you didn't see what you saw, that you well actually saw something else? How many people that they have committed to, you know, uh, psychiatric facilities or people who had medical issues resulting out of it, they made it up something else versus treating the people for what they had. In addition to that, you've got look at what potentially happened going back to Eisenhower and the, you know, the meetings between potentially the ETs and the humans. I mean, but we got to say, when's the last time we heard, actually heard about someone in, in, in the government talking about the military industrial complex that goes all the way back to Eisenhower. Oh, I, I fully agree with you on that. But for Elizondo and Mellon, they have been outspoken about this, especially over the last year or so. All right. And this yeah. is something that has, you know, I've often wondered, and I've even talked to people behind the scenes about this, like, how are they getting away with a lot of what they're saying? I mean, here they are both getting paid by the government as contractors or, or whatever they're, they're advising on advisors. And, and yet here they are speaking out against a lot of what the military represents. I mean, this has to cause a lot of tension. It has to. I mean, if you looked at what they they tried to erase Elizondo like they erased David Adair and they erased uh, Lazar. They wanted to make those guys act like they they didn't uh, they, they didn't exist. And they've done the same thing to him. But now this is in recent history. So at least they're speaking out. They're talking to the Hill. They're trying to bring out the situation. But the thing is, the best thing about it is we're getting people who are in the elected office trying to go ahead. They're listening to it. They're getting momentum. And most importantly, they have people who are on the inside who are protecting them because if they didn't have that level of protection, I would even say Representative Tim Burchett would potentially be at risk for the information he's saying today compared to, you know, who knows what could happen to him if he didn't have the people in there backing up from what he's saying. I mean, they used to say this is political suicide, but even you've got Northrop Grumman coming out on, you know, uh, major pieces uh, coming from their website, going ahead and basically acknowledging everything that's going on with ufology from the report up to where we're at now with a little tagline. Hey, look for careers at Northrop Grumman, basically saying we get it. Come on, work for us. And that's well, the industrial complex right there. Well, I, I get that, and I can appreciate that all too well. But, I mean, with these politicians, as we are starting to see more and more, it started with Mark Warner, then it moved to Marco Rubio, then we found out that the Senate Intelligence Committee had been read in on the UFOs, which now includes the Vice President of the United States, who was on the intelligence community there, Kamala Harris. Okay, now we're seeing Senator Gillibrand, Tim Burchett, who also participated earlier this year in September's Big Phone Home 2, put on by the Unidentified Celebrity Review YouTube channel. You know, he was there. I mean, these are people now who are taking this subject very seriously, not just as a threat narrative. Okay, they want to know what the military knows. He's you flat out said he doesn't trust the military. He doesn't trust the Pentagon. He's not confident with giving him, giving him any, mon any money because he feels that they're not going to tell us anything because that's what they've been doing. I mean, he's, I mean, if, if you read what he's, you know, read the words that he said and you listen to what he said, this is one of the few guys who actually, if you listen to it, he sounds like who's someone from UFO Twitter who's really up to speed on it, either that. Or he's had someone good along the lines of Elizondo and Mellon reading him in on the information that all of us are too familiar with. Okay. Are a lot of these politicians questioning whether or not they should be speaking out about this? Because, look, 
the one thing the military industrial complex has done over the last number of decades is they've taken their pieces of their parts. They'll have bolts made in Michigan. They'll have tires made in California. They'll have, you know, landing gear made in Kentucky. They've spread out all of their, their, manufacturing where it's almost in every state a little the state gets a little bit which yeah. keeps people employed that's what the military industrial complex does and that way they can the military can now say well geez or northrop Grumman or lockheed can say well you know remember when you were pushing that ufo button a little bit too hard how would you like to lose eight thousand jobs in your state because we, we're going to move this elsewhere. Yeah, those 8,000 jobs could result in you not being elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's Is always a, a bribe or a threat, grant, threat game, I hate to say. It's something we look at. It's like right now, it's like one of the biggest donors that we have going to the House of Representatives are the lobbyists for the Nord Stream 2 pipeline from Russia. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe it's because they don't want us to go ahead and pass any penalties or tariffs against that. So it's that old payola game. And my dad used to say in his way was that they're all crooked politicians, that is. Because if you go ahead and you offer someone to buy him a coffee, that's a bribe. And if you take all the payola that's going out and all the lobbying that's happening, it, it's hard to find people that you can actually trust and understand. and and think that they're representing the people who elected him to office and the people they're representing or the money that's actually pouring into their back door. I get that. I mean, that has to be a factor for why a lot of more politicians are, are staying silent right now. We've had, um, right after the initial um, disclosure happened, we had one representative from the House out of indiana who spoke boldly and he was the only one saying yes we should have congressional hearings on this but you know how many additional people out there lined up and stood behind him and say i'm behind this guy i'm gonna go with it absolutely no one i mean i swear it was crickets so you have to wonder are they getting pressure from different areas not to talk or are they getting more of threats saying if you don't do if you go on this particular area we're going to make it difficult for you like you were saying about the industrial complex we only got a couple more minutes left with you on the unbiased ufo report thomas fessler filling in for a vacationing john hudson and thomas avi Loeb, the harvard professor who's setting up the galileo project yeah. he's now kind of jumped into the fray here because politically speaking there's going to be a lot of politicians who want to talk to a scientist with his acumen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, I, I mean, I, I listened to his uh, his comments and everything today, and his uh, big uh, thought with regards to this is all of the information that's being gained, everything that we're learning, everything that we're going to, uh, you know, come together with needs to be open it needs to be transparent and it's something that we're not actually going to be getting from the government and that's why he sees his movement of what he's trying to do is so important compared to what the government is trying to do and trying to lock everything up okay so recently we've seen him team up with elizondo mellon yeah. and and other political officials as the Galileo project and the team starts to grow with this. Yeah. How much pull does a guy like Avi Loeb have when it comes to this? You know, he's, he, he's been controversial to a degree. It was even pointed out on the uh, website from North of Grumman. And I mean, he's made a lot of claims regarding things like, Wama, Wama Mama, <laughs> the uh, the the probe saying, you know, the the rock. The actually, we don't know what was that was flying around the Earth and saying it, it was a, you know, potentially a spaceship. So he's made a lot of out there claims on stuff. So, you know, it it's on that front. To some people, they see he's someone who's jumped the gun on a lot of stuff. But the biggest thing he's got out there is he's got a message. He's got a he's got a point that he's bringing across and he's bringing about uh, the message of open transparency, of sharing the information, of making this something that's a discovery for humanity. And I think the way he's saying it and coming across in his European accent, I think it's resonating with a lot of people and everyone is hearing the government where they're taking the fifth or we're not going to give you the information. 
versus someone who wants to be open and transparent and make this a learning event for everybody. All right, Thomas Fessler, thank you so much for filling in for John Hudson.